Hello again, my friends. So, uh, as you probably gather, um, I am at home uh, in the UK, uh, self-isolating, uh, like many other people around the world, uh, trying to stay safe from this coronavirus, as I am uh, one of those unlucky few, I guess, uh, who's uh, immunosuppressed um, because of some of the medication that I have to take. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm trying to stay out of everybody's way and uh, I guess the hardest part is actually I'm staying away from my daughter as well, which is uh, a little bit difficult to bear, but uh, hopefully it, this will all be behind us soon enough and we can all get back to uh, our normal lives. Anyway, it's also one of the reasons I should say that uh, I wasn't able to travel to Greece like I had intended, which is um, a real shame because uh, I had some, I had planned some really fantastic, uh, at least I hope they would be fantastic, um, excursions into the mountains, some wild camping for uh, landscape and wildlife photography, um, which would have been a lot of fun uh, both to, uh, to do and to bring to you as well. Um, but hopefully uh, it's not gone forever and uh, I'll be able to do it later in the year, either in the, in the summer uh, uh, or in the autumn. So um, hopefully uh, that's uh, in the future. Anyway, um, what I thought I might try and do, seeing as we're all stuck inside, or a lot of us, <coughs> is um, do a couple of little tutorial videos which might be of interest to a few of you and also um, might present a little bit of a project uh, to have a go at whilst we're uh, stuck inside and looking for things to do and keep us occupied. So uh, the first thing that I thought I might have a go at um, was uh, to talk about um, lens calibration, micro adjusting your lens to your camera body. Um, as on practically every single um, workshop that I've run, <coughs> it always seems to come up uh, the, uh, the, um, the problem of getting sharp photos, tack sharp photos. And I'm always asked how I achieve uh, this. And there's various reasons why somebody might not be getting super sharp photos. Um, uh, one example perhaps is um, camera shake. In other words, when you're trying to hand hold a lens and the camera like this, it's very heavy. So uh, you might get camera shake trying to take the picture. <clears throat> Another reason could be that for the subject you're trying to photograph, you haven't got a high enough shutter speed. Um, if it's a, a tiny little bird that flutters its wings a thousand times a second, then it's uh, going to be impossible to um, to photograph with a with a slow shutter speed. Um, and the third reason, which is what we're going to discuss here, is that your lens might not be accurately calibrated to your camera body. Now you might think to yourself, well, I've just spent so many thousands of pounds, dollars, whatever, to buy this lens and camera, why, why isn't it perfect straight out of the box? And the reason is that these, although they're beautifully manufactured and uh, made by these companies, Canon, Nikon, etc., Sony, Fuji, they're all amazing, amazingly engineered uh, lenses and cameras. Um, but they're all built to uh, within certain tolerances and it might be that this particular lens with this particular camera um, though they're within the manufacturer's tolerances it's just ever so slightly uh, focusing uh, out of range of the sensor and when I say slightly I'm talking thousandths of a millimeter uh, or hundredths of a millimeter tiny tiny amount but it's enough at this length of lens to throw your photo out of focus or not give you um, that pin sharp photo that you're really after. Um, but the beauty of these um, these cameras is that you can calibrate them to get accurate focusing uh, in camera and the cameras will remember for every lens in your quiver um, what micro adjustment to make. Um, so once you've set it you can just forget about it, the camera will remember. And you should also remember that you're going to have to do this uh, not only for every lens, but for every focal length. So, for example, if you have a 100 to 400 zoom, 
you'll have to do it at the 100 end and also the 400 end and maybe even in the middle at 200 um, a calibration for each of those vocal lengths then you might have to, if you use uh, teleconverters like this one uh, you'd have to do it without the teleconverter, with the teleconverter, all these combinations um, uh, and the camera will remember that uh, so that next time you go to use it with that particular camera lens comb combination um, you won't have any issues, the camera will focus pin sharp. Um, so yeah. Okay. So the next step uh, you might be asking yourselves is that how do you actually do the calibration? And uh, the way we do that is um, using a focus calibration chart. Uh, you can buy these online, they cost anything from £20 to £60 I think is the most expensive I found on Amazon. Um, um, or you can make one yourself. I chose to make one myself because I, I enjoy making things. Um, so I made this uh, board which I mounted at 45 degrees with the focus chart glued to the front of it. And the whole thing is mounted on a little tripod, um, on a ball head. Uh, so that I can change the angle, make sure it's completely level and parallel to the sensor of my camera um, because they have to be totally opposite each other. Um, uh, yeah, also the other point, you have to um, set the focus chart a particular distance away uh, from the sensor and that has to be 25 times to 50 times the focal length of your, the, the lens that you're trying to um, calibrate. So in this instance, 500 mil uh, times 25, that gives 25 meters distance, um, 12 and a half meters distance, um, as a minimum that we'd need to set this away from the, from the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set all that up and I'll join you then. In the meantime, I'm gonna run a little bit of uh, B-roll for you of me making this, so if you're not really interested to see how I put this together, please feel free to skip ahead. Okay, I'll see you on the other side.
Hello again. And um, I've set up the uh, focusing board, which you'll see out in the garden there. Um, uh, just in the distance, which is about 12 and a half, 13 meters away from me. Um, I leveled it and made sure that it was as parallel as possible that I can make it to my uh, lens down here, my camera and lens down here. And what I've done is, uh, to, to try and get it as parallel as possible, um, if I bring it up on here, um, you'll see the, the focusing line on the back of the camera uh, is, is green, which means it's totally level. Uh, and also the vertical means that it's, uh, you see the line here that flits up and down. Um, it means that it's also uh, um, parallel. So that all being set, I switch over, make sure it's focusing right in the middle and I'll do my first shot. Okay, so the other thing I forgot to mention is that you should be set you should set your lens to the widest possible aperture that it can go to. So in this case it's an f4 lens, so that's what I've set it to. Uh, and also that you make sure, because you're shooting on a tripod, you've switched your um, image stabilization off, um, because that will interfere with it. And um, as long as that's all set to go, it'll just refocus on the center line and uh, I've got it on a 10 second delay to let the cam give the camera a really good chance to settle down before taking the image so that it can make sure that it is as sharp as possible. Okay, so having taken that shot, what we do now is, um, is gradually uh, change the micro adjustment on the back of the camera. Um, taking a shot uh, with every adjustment and then we'll bring all the photos into the laptop and have a look at them and see which is the best point to focus and then we'll know uh, which adjustment is the best to make, if any. So let me just show you that on the back of the camera. It will be different if you have a Nikon or a, or a Fuji or a Sony or anything like that. So. On the back of the camera here, if I can just focus. Come on, focus. Okay. So if I go into the menu, and it should be, I think, under the autofocus, and AF, oop, here we go. So under the AF uh, menu, if you're on Canon, AF micro adjustment, and then it says, it's disabled at the minute, but adjust by lens, uh, so change and we can, so it should have been set on zero here, but what we'll do is we'll increase it to five, plus five, um, and then take another shot and see what that gives us. Then we'll do minus five, take another shot, and see where our focusing uh, is set. So uh, let me do all that, and I'll come back to you in a bit. Okay, so hello again. Um, I've taken all the shots on the camera um, with all the increment adjustments. Uh, um, so I've got, I went, the first shot I did was zero, then I went plus five, took a shot, plus 10, took a shot, 15, took a shot, etc. And then I went the other way on the scale, minus five, 10, 15, 20, etc. Um, taking a shot each time. I've and and in fact, uh, after I finished that, I did also uh, continue on taking more shots uh, with just uh, an increment of one. So I did plus one, two, three, four, five, um, just to see what that would give me. And uh, because I know that that's going to be more accurate for for this particular lens uh, from having done it before. So I just wanted to show you that as well. So if we dive in here, the first shot um, is at zero. Uh, no calibration at all and you can see that in fact the camera uh, and lens is forward focusing 
So you can see this area here where it says uh, focus test chart between that and the, the dark line focus here, that is the sharpest area uh, of this picture. So if we uh, go forward to plus five, you can see that it's brought the focusing back and in fact it's now uh, uh, rear focusing. Um, and this is the sharpest area up above the uh, center focus line. And as we go up, plus 10, it, the focus has moved even further up to the 20, 30, 40 mil uh, region. And then plus 15, it goes even higher still. And then plus 20, uh, it's all the way out at 80 mil is the sharpest part of the uh, image. And the center line here is completely out of focus. And then we went um, minus five, um, which you can see is completely out of focus there. And it's completely out of focus in the middle. And as we progress, it's sending it the focus the other in the other direction. So it's forward focusing down here at 80 mil on this one. Uh, yeah, so it's it's definitely a plus adjustment that we need to make for my lens. So if we go back to uh, zero, and then we'll switch to plus one here, and you can see that plus one is really nice actually, nicely focused right in the middle, um, and it's got a decent depth of field here, so it's uh, minus six, ten mil, and plus... 610 mil is nice and sharp all that area so if we forward that a little bit more that's plus two now and we're losing it from behind here our depth of field but it's still okay in the front um, so that's plus three four plus five and the focus comes all the way down here again so yeah i think for for my particular lens plus one is giving me the best uh, range of focus from the center focus point uh, behind a couple of mil and in front a couple of mil that's my depth of focus uh, depth of field um, so I'm pretty happy with that adjustment there so like I said before you're gonna have to go through and do that for each and every single lens all the combinations with your teleconverters um, all the ranges of your uh, zoom lenses if you've got 100 to 400 like i said you do it at 100 200 400 maybe um, to give you the best uh, calibration for that lens so yeah i hope you found this uh, useful <clears throat> and um, uh, you can have a go at uh, uh, doing this for yourselves for your equipment and um, getting uh, those perfectly sharp shots in the future so thanks for watching uh, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.